So like I said earlier, that uh, we'll be having the GM, the General Manager of Television Nigeria, who is going to set the record straight as per the incident that happened over the weekend that involving five of our staff with the Nigerian police, whose case, which case has been misrepresented, grossly misrepresented in the media. Uh, and I have with me here this morning, Mr. Charles Ibi, the General Manager of TVN. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the Thank program. Thank you very much. And good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Africa. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so, sir, to kick off, uh, you know, the story that has been in the media was the fact that, in fact, like the police did not even recognize these people as journalists in the first place and then tagged them as some sort of people who were about to cause panic. So, like we said earlier, we'd like to just lay down the true, the true lesson series of events mm -hmm. and the facts of the event that actually happened so that people know exactly what happened. All right, thank you very much. Um, like, you, like you said, um, it's a whole lot of representation of facts and issues as we have it out there in the social media. Of course, you know what the social media in Nigeria is. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when a story breaks, people run with it. Um, before, before get down to the nitty gritty to find out actually what really happened, People are already crucified and all of that. Well, the real situation is that, yes, those five guys are staffs of the Nigerian, the, the television Nigerian, and they went out on the strength of the prevalent situation in the country. They were working on the coronavirus, which is a threat to Nigeria and the whole world. In fact, Nigeria has been listed as one of the high-risk countries by the World Health Organization. And also the Lassa fever, everybody knows we have Lassa fever in states of the, of the country that currently have taken a number of lives. So they were out doing a couple of, um, it, it was actually a project actually. They are supposed to basically sensitize, working on projects that will, when it comes out, will sensitize the public more about coronavirus and also about Lassa fever. They have done Vox Pop, they've done special, special reports spot interviews, and they were, that same Friday, they were on the streets, they were in, in, in um, they were in AYA, they were in Wusetu, they were in some popular, um, asking people how much, how much are you aware of this? How do you, what do you know about Lassa fever? What do you know about coronavirus? You know, people need to know. And then in line with what they, they, they with an online TV, and we have a web series that we're working on, that's also going to be part of our uh, way of sensitizing people more of, prevalent situations in the country. So, you know, like in communication, you use various means to entertain your people and as well educate your people. And if you're a keen follower of the social media, you find out and you currently, and you believe with me that, especially for the young generation, there is a, it's a particular way of which if you package, package your information, will drive home the, 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 message. the, the message and the right. content. So, short plays, skits, Dram small dramas and pranks and all of that, all centered around the subject matter. So that was exactly what they were working on that same very Friday. They went to the hospital, um, ostensibly to do what they, as part of the project, it wasn't even, they just went there, it's part of it to get materials that will back up what they will have to do. And then they decided, okay, let's dramatize this. Let's do in short of, in short of this, a short kit, skit, a kind of a prank that at the end of it, the message will be given out. Now, from what we got from, from what we got from them, because they are our people, we are talking from there. Yeah, they met the security at the, at the hospital, told them this is what we want to do. They were granted access, not into the inside the main hospital wards and all yeah. of that. That was the premises of the hospital for them to do, obviously, what was supposed to be a very short um, enactment of okay, this is the situation and how to handle the situation. So, you know, it's a public place, actually. Some of these things get misunderstood and make, get misrepresented. And someone was shouting, somebody is on an emergency and all of that. Actually, it was supposed to be part of the, the, the drama, but it was supposed to be done by them. Then someone else that was there was now shouted. And then the hospital orderlies, like the person that spoke, in case it, for those that have seen the video, one of those people that rushed out with... Um, Stretcher. stretchers and all of that, obviously to help someone that's approaching emergency. Right. But they were not even, that was not their direction. So, 
as they now got to that place, the, the nurses, you know, seeing the attention the nurses were giving, oh, sorry, it is a prank. It is not actually a, a real situation. Mm. You understand? Of course, of course, of course. You, you know how human beings react, darling, when you, when you are in that kind of situation. You understand? It was actually wrong of them not to have gone to the hospital management to let them know something like this was going to go on. But, you know, you know sometimes when you're on the job, there are a, a couple of things you do that sometimes we make mistakes, we are all humans, right. you understand? And they did explain, sorry, it was not supposed to be long, it was not supposed to cause any distraction, we are journalists, this is what we are doing. They explained, but then, you know, the, unfortunately, the, hus the hospital, it just closed down neighbor to the police station, and they just like, okay, we have a situation here, and the police now came in, and these people were um, taken over to the police station. And that's from that point that the whole story started to change. You understand? Now, one very key issue is this. Um, when you watch the, what is on the social media and all of that, they, they, they said they had coronavirus, they were trying to scare people that they had coronavirus. That was not true. At no point did they mention coronavirus to the hospital. They never mentioned coronavirus to the nurses. In fact, if you watch the clip, the nurse that uh, addressed the media, did not say they, were, they told me I have coronavirus. He just said the young man with a foam on his mouth coming right, out. Right. And when she approached, he wiped it off and tell her, sorry, it's a prank. And so at what point did they were pretending to be, to be, so to to be have infected, by, infected the virus. by virus and all of that? This was an explanation that they gave to the police that, sorry, this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to create, do, um, pro, um, uh, produce a sensitization material for the public. Right. You understand? So at that point, the police, I don't know, Nigerian police is Nigerian police, and they are actually doing a great job. But most of the times, we sometimes step overboard in the way we handle things. And that's why we are in this situation right now. I believe strongly that it would have been handled a lot more better than it was. I mean, parading journalists, and, and the, the, the annoying aspect of it is that they were not even identified as journalists. Right. Yes. They said Abuja residents, which was not true. They had a platform. And, and then they called they them had ID. Stars Yes, they had their ID. And even in that video, they mentioned it. They asked, the journalists asked them, what platform? And they said the Nigerian. And why did the journalists that even reported that story, why did they have to cut that part out? Right. Yes, you so, know, uh, these are some of these things that, you know, it happens that we begin to wonder. So, um, going by the whole video and the report that actually came out from that incident, the police said that they are still investigating, they are going to investigate. Have the police reached out to you to maybe ask questions less or less regarding the incident or any other person in the company as regards to that situation? It's a very key question. This happened on Friday. Right. Friday, I think between four, 3 and 5 p.m., I think around that time. Immediately we had that, we got the alert that they are at the police station, we rushed down to the police station. We met the officers, the IPO, even the DPO. At the desk we told, okay, they said, this is what happened, this is what happened. Okay, we apologized, all right. They directed us to go to the hospital. The police said, okay, the hospital alerted us, I will have to do our job. So you go and meet the hospital management and tell them, so let's resolve this. And we went to the hospital. Um, the, the, the chairman or whatever in the hospital wasn't on seat, but the lady that was on seat there placed a call to her, because I understand it was a, it's a lady that heads that place. And she referred that we should go back to the police, that they have handed the case over to the police. So the police, whatever we decide, the police, uh, you understand? So when we got back to the police station, it, was, it became a different issue altogether. That why did we have to go to the hospital? All of that. I mean, we, had, we went there ostensibly to explain ourselves, and especially to apologize. Right. That lady especially that spoke on, on camera, we assisted, okay, you are the one involved. Please, we are sorry. We are very, very sorry. We were wrong not to have informed your management and all of that. It, was not, it wasn't intended to cause any mishap. It wasn't intended to raise any unnecessary panic. We had to explain, and they were okay that well, let's just go back to the police station and settle it. But then the police had a, a different case altogether. And then you are supposed to investigate, and then before you take part, take any kind of action. Now the curious thing is between that Friday and Saturday, when the, they were paraded, what investigations had the police 
uncovered as yes, in exactly what what intent as in mm -hmm. what did they uncover that actually these people were out to to disrupt i was going to get there and then they had to parade them and they had to parade like, them as, as common, common, criminals. common criminals without any investigation and you named so them far. prank stars you didn't even acknowledge the fact that they were journalists yes. and i don't know actually i don't know why John, the, the, the people that reported this had to report it the way i don't know whether they were made to do that but i don't think it was actually wrong because the, the, we monitored the interview, even when they were granting that interview, we heard what was said. Even the, the, the guy that, that explained the actual part they did, the, the, funny enough, it was not like the only part that they said, we are wrong, we are wrong, coronavirus. Actually, they did not mention coronavirus in that hospital. It was just somebody on wheelchair. Okay, doesn't mean anybody on wheelchair that's swimming now has coronavirus. That's the story that the media now put out. Of course, they were working on sensitization, but they never mentioned to any nurse or any doctor that are um, having coronavirus, which is now being said they claim to have virus, that they want to create a false alarm in the FCT, which is very, very, very wrong. So it's, it's, it's always good to, let's put the, the record straight. We're not claiming, we're not saying, I mean, for our intent, they're supposed to take appropriate authority, um, permission from the appropriate authority before you embark on anything. But in that case, when a mistake, when an error has been done, it, it, does it have to escalate to that level okay. with explanations and so, every other thing well, I have done? Quickly, do you think, from your own point of view, do you think this is an attempt on the part of the Nigerian police to, let's say, is it guard the media or do not really allow the people out there to know the truth as regards to what really happened? And then we're still battling that stuff in yes. Nigeria. Of course, it's actually necessary for us to create awareness and, and all of that. I feel if the Nigerian police have actually taken their time out, I'm still, I'm still going to come back to the question, but I'm just speaking from my own yeah. perspective. If the Nigerian police have actually taken out the time to um, know that, okay, this whole Lassa fever thing and coronavirus, as much as um, we don't want to raise panic in the polity, but it is necessary that people there is enough uh, awareness, awareness. And enough awareness should be created so people are aware of it. And then if a particular media organization or people from the media, journalists, come out to carry out sensitization, I feel on the part of the police, they are supposed to actually investigate yes. the whole issue before parade them as exactly. common criminals. This, okay, which platform are they operating under? How long has this platform been? On what ground? What, what has this platform what are they been done doing? so far? Exactly. So, uh, my question to you now is, do you think the police is, uh, is not doing their job in the right direction? Well, uh, the police is a great institution. Uh, I respect the police, constituted authorities and all of that. They have the, their way of doing their own thing. I don't know. I'm not going to teach them their job. But I'm going by the premise that what we are meant to believe that is the police is your friend. This right. police is supposed to be out there to protect you, right. out there to get to guard you. You understand? So that is why, on our own part, we are hugely surprised at the tone of the event, how the whole thing went down. You know, the the uh, the, 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 in fact, the underlying issue is this: we have already explained, and even the lady from the minister's office, the media, aid, she there's uh, even mentioned it. Even it's even on on radio that Nigeria is one of the critical. Uh, Point as in one of has been listed as a high risk for this special coronavirus. You understand? So we have a, do we have a situation in our, at hand? We have a situation. We don't have to wait until lives are lost before we really know. Yes, this is what we have to do. You understand? So I don't. I wouldn't say the police is out there trying to gag the media. Or uh, I mean, I think they are doing their job the way they think it's best to do it. But it's rubbing out. It's, I mean, it's rubbing off the wrong way, and we are getting the wrong. And publicity. I mean, going by what people are saying on the social media, people need to get to know the facts. Mm. Everybody makes mistakes, even in professions. Doctors make mistakes. Lawyers do make mistakes. And I, I, mean, think, I and think people are too quick to jump into a particular story without actually hearing from both sides. Exactly. Like I actually know about, I hear that um, there are three sides to the story. The two sides of the or, or, of the opposing. Uh, yeah. Parks and then there's tr the truth to the story, right? Yeah. So my point now is, okay, what uh, is the organization, the company itself, Television Nigeria and the Nigerian News? I, I'm aware that there's a press release that has been sent out there. Exactly. So how far has this press release gone, and how much? What is the what is uh, the what have what's the what are the efforts? Uh, what are the efforts? The there? organization. Yes. Yeah. All right. Could you the release of since that Friday? That is one one of the things that baffles us about the whole issue. They were, they were not allowed access to it. their lawyers. They, in fact, to a large extent, we are not even allowed to see them or talk to them, you know, despite very several efforts being made. I think it took the intervention of the NUJ, 
before a lawyer was even allowed to be identified with these people. You understand? So now the. So they, that mean that why being heard? Yes. They were denied access they were to the law. Absolutely. Exactly. But isn't that against the law? My because point is that every suspect before proving guilty has has the right to a lawyer. Exactly. And then like regarding representation, mm -hmm. in case you don't have one, right. one yes. will be provided right. for, you. for you. So, but in this case, it was different. We are not allowed access. They were not allowed. Okay, fine. They only allow us to give them food, and that's all. No legal representation. For most of the time, family members were not allowed to see them, and we are wondering for what crime. And these people are not criminals. They're not criminals. They have been held in detention. Unlawfully de uh, detained since Friday, and today is Monday already. They are still there. Okay, this is so the Hammer Tan season. There's yes, a lady um, with them. We have four four men and one one lady. So okay, we would like to know what the organization. Yes, the, the organization is. have not we've not rested uh, since the, this happened. Been, the NUJ now is involved because these are journalists. I mean, trying to do their job, even though they made a mistake, it doesn't warrant. I mean, the level of treatment that has been, that they're, they're getting. The, the, from the feelers, they were saying, okay, likely they'll be charged to court. Okay, so we'll go to court and then we'll find out what are you being charged for? And then we'll take it up from there. So there, there will be bills and all of that. But right now, we are still on this situation. But as it, as, as it goes, we thought it pertinent to let Nigerians know. This is actually the real situation. The way the media went all about it, paraded them on the front pages of social media, newspapers, television, mm, right. Abuja prank stars. I mean, please. And I also want to use this opportunity to, to appeal to, to the public, especially our fans, those who love television, Nigerian, what we do, and the Nigerian news. Please, 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 please. It was a huge representation of that. We, we are not out to scare anybody. I mean, the scare is already out there. Coronavirus is real. Mm -hmm. Lassa fever is real. We, we are only trying to add our own quota to sensitizing the public. This is real. Do this and do that to protect yourself. I mean, prevention is better than a cure. And the more you know, the better for you. A lot of Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians, and this is key, do not avail themselves to mediums of information, especially when it comes to news. Mm -hmm. Social media is viral, but it's always on the negative sides and then, and, and then on the hilarious side that people right. really want to go to the social media to pay attention. If you put up a news, Lassa fever is this. Some people will not even listen to it. They will either they are busy playing music or watching a movie. But if you put it in a form of a drama, you dramatize it and all of that, and then you use that means to pass a message out. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, please, this is this, this is this is what you do in a kind of situation. That is it. That is what we were just trying to do. We are not trying to scare anybody. They are not pranksters. They are not criminals. They are not jobless people. They are youths aching out a living. I mean, so it, for them to be branded and people call on social media and start saying all sorts of things, please, I think is very, very wrong. And at least the media also, I also want to appeal, uh, appeal also to our colleagues, please, let's, uh, uh, most of the time, let's d dig and investigate before we go out there because whatever we write or whatever we say goes a long way to tarnishing images, image of people. So please remain loyal to Television Nigeria. Please always stick to Television Nigeria. We are for Nigeria. If you go on our platform and you see what we put out there, I charge you, I dare you, go and find out. We represent Nigeria in all ramifications. Our major focus is to rebrand Nigeria. Remove all these negative narratives about Nigeria. Tell it as it is, though. But then, with the positive light that we are not criminals, we are not jobless people, mm -hmm. we are not lazy, like we have been branded. Outside world, they are, they are making us look like we are one very, very damned race. Mm -hmm. Poverty headquarters and all of that. What? Who said so? So we are out there to retell the story, and that is what we are doing. We are trying to let you know situations that you need to know. On a need-to-know basis, that's what we do on television Nigerian. So please, 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 we apologize, actually, for, I mean, those of you that got it the wrong way when the news broke and you must have started having doubts about our platform. So please, this is the real situation. And please do pray for the Nigerian media. Pray for Nigeria. Let's all join hands to make sure that we create a better society for all of us. Of course, we'll also be giving you updates, especially on this issue as it happens. Okay, so with regards to updates, uh, to our very dear uh, viewers out there, we'd like to hear from you. For, for those of you who have actually seen these videos, speaking to us, and you've actually also joined us on the program this morning to watch the general manager of uh, Television Nigeria and talk about, give us 
the, our own side of the story and the truth to the story uh, as opposed to what is making the rounds. We would like to hear from you. We, 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 like I said earlier in the program, this program is interactive. We would yes. like to hear from you. We need you to drop comments on our social media platform. It's Television Nigeria on Facebook. Sorry, please, on a party short, at least, I want to also set this record straight. The Nigerian police they are, is a great institution. We are partners in progress. We've worked a lot before now with the Nigerian police. And the Nigerian security apparatus, the army, and the, the, in fact, the fight against insurgency, it's more like our station is at the top of it. Go to our site and you see what we do. We report live direct from Sambisa. We have our reporters stationed at the defense headquarters, and they bring us feedback on to, to what is happening. So the Nigerian police are our partners. They are, are, they are it's a great institution, and we respect mm -hmm. the police. And we also expect that, I mean, we work together in whatever way and you know, whatever possible means to make sure that we create a better society mm -hmm. which is what the police is actually doing right. thank you very much so we'd love to hear from you and we'll also uh, crave your indulgence that you should go actually help us spread the message across the people the truth about the whole arrest and uh, and the events that led to the arrest the unlawful arrest of our journalists at the nigerian news uh, in uh, the television nigerian nigerian news here thank you so much uh, mr charles Ibe, for joining us on the program this morning thank you very much for having me right. And so, um, the Africa continues shortly after this break. You join us.